Good morning, everybody. My last Friday um, live for the year. Hope you're all staying cool. If you're in Perth, it's a pretty big scorcher out there. And uh, I think we're going to have to get used to it being hot um, from now on. Um, quick and quirky things to do today. I'm going to be demonstrating. My name is Karen Frankel. I love sharing all that I know about drawing helping you to get drawing and uh, take pleasure in what you're doing. And that's what this video all is, is about today. Um, quick and nasty, I sometimes call it in the studio. In other words, don't worry about it. It's like doodling. You just get to enjoy what you're doing just for the sake of the doing. Don't worry about the end result. And in fact, the end result will be lots of fun but some short, quick things for you to do. You can do them with your kids. Um, they're fantastic. So let's get going. Now, the first one is called crumbled paper. And here's some that I've prepared earlier. Now, I don't think you can quite see what's going on with that paper, so I'll give you a quick demonstration. Um, I've got some cartridge paper here that I've uh, torn up into A4 size. Um, you can just use printer paper that's already A4 size, really doesn't matter. And for the first bit, I literally just crumpled up. And in fact, this, this paper is a little bit thick. And so uh, I've got a bit of a tear in this one, doesn't really matter. Um, and you open it up and flatten it down just with your hand on the desk and play with that. And the second piece of paper I have, I actually folded and I folded and I folded every which way and then I undid it and folded it all up again. And that was, that's on there. And let's see what we can do with that. So I'm going to use um, a 6B pencil. Again, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's graphite, you can do it in charcoal as well. But what we're hoping for is an interesting background and then we're going to draw in. I forgot to mention my subject matter. This has become my favorite subject matter. Um, in my Get Drawing book, it's all about drawing apples and, well, not all about drawing apples, but that is often my, my subject because they're so simple and I want to get through to people that you don't have to choose a difficult subject. And often people think that they can't draw because they can't draw a portrait or they can't draw a horse. And uh, all you need to draw is an apple or a pear. Look how quirky that is. Well, I always choose my fruit for how quirky it looks so that I can draw it. Okay, so I'm going to be trying to draw uh, something like that. And uh, let's get started. So that's making a big noise. So bear with me. I hope you can see that. Can you see how the cracks uh, will bring that closer? So the crumples are revealing some interesting marks. And we're going to do something slightly different on this one. We're actually going to draw. I'm not looking at my subject for the moment, so I'm making it up. Having, having drawn pears and apples for quite a while, though, that's a ridiculous stalk. And we're going to put the apple down here, and its ridiculous stalk there. And let's see what happens with the folds in the paper. So that fold has caught the paper, whereas that, so the folds that are away from us leave a hill that the pencil catches, and the folds that are um, towards us um, leave a white. So let's see if we get a nice effect on um, on the apple. So I probably haven't folded it enough, so I'm going to just 
put some more creases in there so we get some more interest just a bit of fun And on this one, I'm actually going to come back with an eraser and see what happens with that texture. I'm quite enjoying that texture. You have to think differently when you're putting in the highlights. Um, so I've put in a highlight at the bottom there, which doesn't really exist, does it? So I'll come back in with... Actually, I changed my mind. Highlights do exist there if they're reflecting off the light. But... I'm completely not being precious. I'm putting a shadow on the light side as well. So... Just having a bit of fun, I reckon. You caught me on camera. Yeah. Half the point of this is to have fun on something that's already stuffed up. So it's my Dare to Stuff It Up series. So I've stuffed the paper up first, and then I'm working on top of it. And if it doesn't turn out, I can blame the paper. I'll bring this closer to you because I'm not sure that you can see the creases. I'm really enjoying what it looks like on the paper here. So if I put in a dark background, then the light becomes more intense. I'm quite enjoying those those wrinkles. So just a bit of fun on that. And this one a bit closer up. Probably didn't put enough folds in there for it to get really interesting. So when you do it, you can change that up. Okay, next, smudgy charcoal. So you might be thinking, whenever I use charcoal, it's smudgy. What so what's different? Well, we are going to start the drawing off with crushed charcoal powder. And um, it's, I will put some on here, it will all drop down. So for you, it's better if you do it on a table so that you've got a, um, a collection, if you will, of charcoal powder. So I'm just going to um, lay down some charcoal like that. You can see it's all falling down as I I don't know if you can see that. Um, I'm going to do some on the table next to me as well. Now, there is something called a paper stump, actually called a torsion, and uh, it's a little piece of wrapped um, paper that comes to a point. I actually don't have one to show you. Um, so I'm going to use a good old uh, cotton bud, and I'm going to draw with the smudgy charcoal. So if I Take some off there. So the aim is to just draw a sort of ghosty picture. So these are meant to be quick. Obviously, there are no rules. You can come back with your charcoal and draw into it if you wish. I just thought you might like to try and restrict yourself. Sometimes if you restrict yourself and you only give you uh, yourself one thing to be able to do, 
you might be surprised at what happens. So I'm using my powdered collection on the table there because that isn't giving me enough because it didn't stay there, it all dropped off. So you can actually get quite dark. And you can see you're allowed to leave white edges so that that represents your, your light. I'm quite enjoying that. Let's see if we can put a decent stalk on that. Should we have one coming out the side? <laughs> like the pair that I showed you. And we can get a little bit darker. Quite a nice effect. So I haven't put any raw charcoal on that. I've only used my crushed up charcoal. So there's lots of powder that I'm picking up. And there's your smudgy charcoal. Let's put one more line here. Let's see. If, yeah. How about that? I quite enjoy that. I can see it in the screen and I'm quite enjoying what it looks like. Um, okay, smudgy charcoal. Quick, 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 quick. Obviously, you can take longer than, than, uh, than this. It's a quick demonstration just to show you how quickly you can get things down and just enjoy what you're doing. Now, I'm going to turn this paper around or take it off completely for the next bit. And... The next one is a warm-up that I've done with my, my students, and we're going to use a white candle. Now, you can use any colour you want if you've, if you've got some coloured candles, I guess, but white is, is the obvious one we've all got lying around. You can see this one is particularly dirty. It's been lying around in my, uh, in my drawing box, and I'm going to lay down, and you can see the colours are coming down. I'm pressing quite hard because I want to get a waxy surface there because that's going to give us a very interesting effect when we draw back into it. So I have uh, my 6B. Oh, that's a 9B. There's my 6B. Um, but it doesn't really matter which, which pencil you use. Sorry, I was just looking down there for my trusty 2B. Um, but I haven't put it there, so let's go with the 6B. And you'll see that the wax resists the pencil, and you end up with a really interesting texture. Let's put our apple in the background this time. Now, I'm not sure that you can see the texture just yet because I've only put in some lines. Let's see what happens when I put some shadow in and you can see that there's a beautiful texture. Now, one thing I'm going to warn you about when you use this technique, you can't rub out because as soon as you rub out, you smudge that wax and you'll be left with a dirty mark. In fact, I'll show you down here. So if I try and rub out, that's what happens. So you might like to use that as a shadow and use it deliberately and creatively, but just a word of warning. I love using tools that you can't uh, fix by rubbing out because your brain seems to sense that, oh, well, you can't fix it, you can't rub it out, you might as well just go for it. And if it doesn't work, you can blame the, blame the tools.
I can actually feel the pieces of wax lifting up off the paper as I'm doing this. Takes a bit of getting used to that texture. So the point goes down a little bit um, more interestingly. You can actually see some fine lines. I like to try and remember the shadow underneath the uh, objects. It helps with the 3D effect. And I'll bring that a bit closer so that you can see. I really love that, uh, that waxy effect and I don't mind that the candle was dirty and it left those those bits underneath. So there you go. That's our wax. So let's turn that piece of paper over and we'll work on the other side. Okay. Two hands. Um, this works particularly well. Oh, it works with anything, of course. I'm going to say that. Um, I love using it with um, textures. I've got some highlighters here. If you can, of course, do it with two pencils, two bits of charcoal, one bit of charcoal, one pencil, anything you like. But the object of this exercise is to draw with both hands. So some of you out there might be ambidextrous. If anyone is, please let me know. I'd love to see if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you can draw with both hands. I've got three lovely people watching me. That's gorgeous. Four people, hi. Send me a comment. I wonder if I can see comments yet. Um, give me a love, give me a hi. Um, I'd love to be able to see if you're there. Um, I can see in the top corner that four people are watching me, so hello. Okay, so I'm drawing with two highlighters at once, and I'm trying to decide, am I going to draw like that? So follow both highlighters round together. Or am I going to draw like that? So it's a bit of fun, but try and keep both pens going at the same time. Obviously, you can change colors if you want to. Look at that. Shadow on that side, shadow on that side. What are we doing? We're having fun, that's what we're doing. Just keep both of those on there at the same time. You'll get a bit uncoordinated. Oh, looks quite good. I don't even mind that there's shadows in the middle. So this is all about not being precious and enjoying. So the last one is three colors and what i've done is i've taken three of my pencils you can of course do it with textures it would look fabulous with textures you can do it with three pencils you can do it with three pencils on top of wax on top of crumpled paper so you can combine them all just have a good play so i've put three colors there Make sure that when you bind them together, so you can use a, um, an elastic band to keep them together. I've used um, just a bit of masking tape or sticky tape that you can use. Make sure that they all sit flat when you do that. When you are drawing, you'll see that you can swap to different colors. But the, the point for me is to draw with all those three colors. 
I'll push one down a bit. So this takes away the preciousness of having to have a um, one line that's working for you. Because obviously you're drawing three lines at once. Now all of these um, pencils that I'm using are actually watercolor pencils. So I'm guessing that if I add water to that, it will make a big mess. So you do have to twist and turn this a bit. And I can feel my head getting all precious about this and saying, no, don't add water, it will stuff it up. But that's the whole point to play. Although I do like that effect. And one of the things these exercises will show you is it's okay to loosen up. And sometimes you learn from these um, getting out of your comfort zone and you take that back into your work. And uh, for me, that's one of the most exciting bits about doing um, these sorts of warm ups or these sorts of experimental exercises because you don't usually let yourself do that. And so if you like what that looks like, you go, well, actually, I don't really need the real colors of the apple to make it look pretty cool. Um, you might take the, some of these exercises into your work. Um, and besides having fun, which is the real reason we're doing it, um, you might find that you really like the effect. And I am going to wet this. So I've got my um, little water pen there. I'm going to squeeze some out. It drops into my hand. My hand's quite dirty from playing with the graphite. Let's see what happens when I add water. So this is an added extra. It is getting a bit muddy. So when you, when you mix all three... Um, colors together, primary colors, although I've got the green in there, which is obviously a secondary, it starts to get a bit muddy here. So I thought that that might happen. I do prefer it without the mix, but so what? It's just a piece of paper. How about that? So um, I dared to stuff it up. Did I stuff it up? Who knows? Do we have to put a put a, a, a title on it? Probably not. Um, I'm just going to show off these as well. These are um, Windsor and Newton watercolor markers. Um, I bought them when I was traveling to the snow um, in August this year, I think it was, so that I could do sketches. And if I hold all three of these, because they're watercolor markers, they're going to do the same thing there. But let's see what effect we can get. I, I'm not going to tape them together. I'm just going to hold them like that. That's pretty much enough. What do you reckon? So have fun with whatever you've got at home. Just try it. If I just wet that bit. That's all you need, really. Well, that's it from me this year. I've really loved coming to you every Friday and um, I hope to continue in the new year. I'm going great guns on my book and so I'm pretty sure it's going to be published next year. If you would like to join my drawing group, 
We've got two places for you to do that. One is the email list so that you get a heads up on what I'm doing on a Friday, but also some added extras. I will be continuing to send out emails um, for the rest of this year, even though this is the last, last live video. So go to my website, karenfrankel.com, and click on Get Drawing, and you can join our list. The other way to join us is on Facebook. We have an exclusive Get Drawing um, group, and you can send me your drawings, share your drawings and sketches with everybody. Ask for some critiquing if you wish, and I'm happy to help you out with that. And it's been fantastic having you on board. Get drawing, everybody. If you celebrate Christmas, have a wonderful, wonderful, very special Christmas and meaningful New Year. If you're just taking a break in the summer, enjoy that too. Love you lots. Bye.